Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone, thanks for joining us. A controversial workplace protection bill is all but set to pass Parliament's upper house. Human rights groups, unions and environmentalists are outspoken about their concerns, warning it could prohibit free speech. It's declarations like these that foster a healthy democracy, but human rights groups are warning the right to protest could become a thing of the past. Right, so we could see a group of nurses marching down to Parliament House and they could have significant fines applied to them and potentially three months in jail. The proposed amendments, including hefty fines or even jail time for unlawful activity. Unions, Aboriginal groups and environmentalists among those voicing their concerns. Now one of the country's most influential think tanks has weighed in. Our submission highlighted that existing laws are already adequate for dealing with uh, these issues. If you commit trespass or if you're a public nuisance, there are already existing laws to deal with those matters. Last night, the Liberals' workplace protection bill passed its second reading in the Upper House. Labor says it will erode free speech. The bill goes too far. It, it takes us um, to a position that we're really uncomfortable with. We don't believe that it's right um, to start banning protests from any street and that's essentially what the bill did. It is quite simple. We want to protect the workers' right to work, the businesses' right to operate free from workplace invasions and free from interference. Independent MLC Ruth Forrest will have the final vote. Those opposed to the bill will put their case forward to the member for Murchison, urging her not to support it. Uh, she is a very committed parliamentarian and an excellent legislator and I would encourage Ruth to have a think about this bill. If it's passed a third time, the bill will become law in August when Parliament returns. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Allied health workers say gaining a fair pay rise will be the focus of this year's bargaining negotiations. Workers say current rates are uncompetitive compared to other states and the resulting staff shortages are causing backlogs to build up. If we can't pay the petrol to get in to, to work each day, then we can't help get people out of hospital. Haksu has asked to meet with the state government to discuss its proposal. Independent member for Clark Andrew Wilkie has slammed the state government for slow progress at Hobart's Macquarie Point. It follows comments from Anthony Albanese earlier this week criticising an appalling lack of development at the site. I mean, what are we going to have next? A, a Ferris wheel? A spaceport? You know, what's the next crazy idea going to be for Macquarie Point? How about the Premier grips up his government grips up the development corporation and gets the job done. The state government says remediation work is taking place to enable the next phase of development. Tasmanians can sign up to the Aurora Plus app for free from July 1 as part of the state government's winter assistance package to help households cope with an 11.88% increase in their electricity bills. Our research shows that um, Aurora Plus substantially, substantially lessens uh, the likelihood of bill shock for customers and that's particularly important for customers as they're facing the higher winter bills at the moment. Labor has launched a petition calling on the state government to cap power prices at 2.5 per cent. Tasmania has recorded more than a thousand coronavirus cases for the fourth consecutive day. The spike comes as Tasmania records its 89th death of the pandemic, a man in his 80s living in the state south. 47 people are in hospital with the virus, including 16 being treated specifically for it. Three people are in intensive care. Families involved in the Hillcrest Jumping Castle tragedy have engaged lawyers to help them fight for compensation. Sydney-based legal firm Stax Goodcap will represent the families of two children who were injured but survived. The lawyers told Nightly News 7 Tasmania the focus is on the actions of the operator and safeguards put in place by the school. They want to speak with anyone who witnessed the event. Ground has been broken on a new facility in the state's north, providing long-term homes for those living with a disability. Newnham Lanes will help residents live more independently while allowing vital supports to be delivered safely. 
the first sod of a new disability accommodation facility turned by a future resident. 21-year-old Mitch Clark suffers from a rare disorder impacting one in 25,000. He has Prader-Willi syndrome, uh, which is a genetic disorder. Number 15 chromosome was damaged during pregnancy. Uh, he has eating disorder where he never feels full. Uh, he has low muscle tone. Um, his motor skills are very far behind. He is basically a, a child at heart. Mitch currently lives at home with his mum and requires 24 hours supervision. We uh, have our challenges every day and it would just be lovely to see him living independently and taking care of him his, himself because he wants to. So. Yeah, he doesn't verbalise it, but he he shows it in his actions. We've been working on Newnham Lanes for about three years um, with a vision to create a, a community that allows NDIS participants with a specialist disability accommodation funding uh, to live more independently. The eight long-term rental units will cater to different disabilities with adjustable height benches and wider hallways, enhancing accessibility and improving livability. There's, I think, significant demand for specialist disability accommodation across the state and I'd say Tasmania is behind the eight ball in terms of building um, to cater for those needs. The need for integrated support facilities like these, urgent. It's extremely important and, and this development reflects the way we want to go um, and that is uh, giving people uh, every opportunity um, to live their best lives. It's going to be amazing for both myself and Mitchell. He's, he's ready for independence and basically so am I. Construction is set to be completed by year's end. McKenna Bailey, 7 Tasmania News. New figures show Tasmanians have been taking the heart health message seriously, with a surge in locals getting themselves tested. Experts say a recent spate of prominent Australians dealing with heart issues is behind the spike, with men in particular at risk. They were the heroes of our youth. Their feats are part of national folklore. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yes, yes, yes. Suddenly the Eagles are alive. Matera sets sail for home. And the Eagles hit the Australia was shocked when heart attacks killed cricket great Shane Warne and Rod Marsh in March. Labor politician Kimberly Kitching also passed away at the same time, while AFL champion Peter Matera narrowly survived one last month really brought a sudden awareness to people about how at risk they might be and that they can't take their health for granted. Tasmanians have responded. Heart Foundation data shows 150 people undertook a heart health check in March, double the monthly average, while traffic to their site also doubled. The surge put down to the pool of celebrities like the King of Spin. It's increased our awareness that um, you know, rel relatively young reasonably fit, uh, particularly males, can just suddenly have a major heart event. Shane Warne was a notable celebrity, um, really someone that we were all very familiar with um, and have often grown up with. Doctors are also dealing with a wave of questions. I've had that conversation with lots of people, particularly men of that sort of 40, 50, 60 age. Tasmanians have the highest heart disease risk in the nation. And on average, more than 8,000 people per year have a heart attack. Of those, 173 will die, a vast majority of them men. Experts urging us not to wait any longer. Have a word to their GP and, and, and get, get assessed their specific risk factors for heart disease. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. A Tasmanian who lost his mother to cancer is donating half a million dollars to a specialist clinic which fights a disease. Mark Barber Luke's funds will go towards providing ongoing care for cancer survivors after their treatment at Launceston's Holman Clinic. The donor says he sees philanthropy as an investment with infinite returns. In these difficult times, it's really, really important to start investing in each other. And there's no better way to invest in each other than investing in something like this. It comes after Mr Barberluke pledged a quarter of a million dollars 12 months ago towards new radiation therapy equipment. He now wants the federal government to match his latest donation dollar for dollar. 
One of Tasmania's biggest employers has unveiled radical changes to its parental leave policy. Beginning in July, 15 weeks of paid leave will be provided to all new parents, regardless of whether they are the primary or secondary carer. A new digital platform will also provide staff with access to resources, helping them navigate their changing lives. Employees say it will give them peace of mind and precious time at home. I don't want to miss out. I want to be able to be there for my partner and for, my, and for the baby. So it's, um, it's a real game changer in, in, allow, in giving us that time. The leave can be taken within the first two years of the child's life. Rally cars are tuned and ready to tear up Tasmania's roads as racing returns to the state for the first time since 2019. The reigning champion has returned, but a local team is hoping to stir the pot in a heavily modified Daihatsu charade. Daihatsus aren't renowned for their speed, except for this one. Able to run to nearly 10,000 RPM, the charade is powered by a Toyota engine and is the great local hope in the returned Rally Launceston, formerly known as Rally Tasmania. Everyone's got to work together as a team. That's what I really like about rowing. Lee Peterson is a two-time Australian champion in his own right. Now he feels every bump vicariously through his son Aidan, the only Tasmanian racing every round in the junior championship for those aged under 26. He's the first Tasmanian ever actually to, to do a rally legally on his L plates. He got dispensation to do that and so he's, he's very familiar with these roads. Roads which are considered some of the best for rally racing in the country. The roads are built to you know handle a lot of rain and it runs off whereas uh, in West Australia it rains, it, it turns into a, quite a slippery quagmire really, really quickly. The charade is all built locally but has parts sourced from all around the world and tweaked just right for Tasmania's roads. Righto, let's go. Four right long, 150. Three right and four left, 50. For navigators with half a clue, you'll need to head to the Toyota truck. Team boss Neil Bates is mentoring his two sons, including Harry, the rally's reigning champion from 2019 and the current series leader. I drove for Toyota for 20 odd years and so I've got, I don't think you can see it, but there's a bullhorn in the middle of my throat there, so I'm a Toyota man through and through. Tasmania is, is a really important event for us as part of the championship. It's very popular amongst the, the competitors. Uh, and so we're just so pleased to be back here after two years. Two days of action starts tomorrow with 200 competitive kilometres to be raced. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Dark Mofo may be over, but another favourite festival is set to keep Tasmanians warm over the winter months. The Festival of Voices will see the entire state come alive and organisers say the Big Sing Bonfire event will be bigger and better than ever. Warm up your pipes, the Festival of Voices is inching closer. Organisers are hoping this year's Big Sing song will get the audience up and out of their deck chairs. It speaks to place, it speaks to um, uh, Kunanyi and it speaks to the Derwent River, so we're doing, of course, River Deep Mountain High. The 90 minute performance will spotlight an angelic lineup of local and interstate vocalists, including Maria Lorigi, who will lead the choir. Yeah. It's a great exchange of knowledge, of love, of passion, commitment, and people releasing something from inside of themselves. Auslan signing star Mikey Webb will also be flown down from Queensland. Do I love you? My oh my. And obviously there's a bit of a beat. There's a video out there at the moment where you can learn how to sign the chorus of River Deep Mountain High. Converting car park to stage, the free event will feature something for everyone. And unlike last year, mask and capacity restrictions have been dropped. We'll have fire pots, there'll be lots of warmth, lots of colour, lots of food and beverage offerings. The more the merrier. It's always electric because there are lots of families and children and people are rugged up and, you know, you look out and it's a sea of beanies and puffer jackets, but smiling faces. When the sun goes down, a golden cloud of flickering lights will come up, with candles on sale to support Tasmanians doing it tough this winter. The funds we raise will go towards uh, providing food hampers, warm clothing for people uh, to provide homes and financial assistance. Event organisers are predicting thousands to turn up for the fan favourite event and be wowed by a flashy fireworks finish. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. 
two community market gardens will be developed in Launceston's northern suburbs to address food insecurity and unemployment. The Tasmanian Community Fund will invest $500,000 over five years to create the Food and Resilience Movement at Unum and Ravenswood. On the surface it, it looks like it's addressing food security but there's so much more that will ripple out from this and um, we hope to upskill community members in how to cook uh, food. Uh, we'll have plenty of community events to engage with community and encourage participation. It's about the development of gardens and it's about the skill development of those who will be working through. So all in all really about food sustainability for the two northern suburbs um, neighbourhood houses and their communities which I think is critical. The project aims to increase access to affordable fresh produce while providing employment opportunities. Vinnie's annual sleep out is taking place tonight, inspiring Tasmanians to raise critically needed funds and awareness of homelessness. This year's event featuring a rebrand, encouraging the community to sleep in their car, spend a night in their backyard or couch surf to experience sleeping rough for one night. As opposed to previous years we've, where we've actually referred to, uh, to the event as the CEO sleep out for St Vincent de Paul. So we've changed the theme here and that's a deliberate uh, a deliberate change to involve more in the community. The organisation aims to raise $150,000, which will go towards restocking Vinnie's vans around the state, providing food and warm clothing to those in need, while also providing short-term accommodation. Students from Montrose Bay High School have stepped into the studio to learn the ropes at a real radio station, spending the day with Triple M and Hobart Hit FM. The opportunity is part of the Smith Street Family Smarts program, designed to boost interest and involvement in the creative arts sector. Afters has partnered with the Smith family to develop the radio and podcasting course, teaching the students the fundamentals of content creation, recording and editing. We've been having fun with it, not being serious most of the time, but it's trying to get the idea of what it would be like to do it. The program coincides with the organisation's winter appeal, raising funds to provide additional support for disadvantaged children. Hawthorne's incoming president Peter Nankervell is making his views on a Tasmanian AFL side clear, saying he supports it. Speaking on Melbourne Radio, he says the club owes it to Tasmania after 22 years of playing in Launceston. If there was to be a, a 19th licence issued or a, new, a Tasmania team, you expect the Hawks to be you know, supportive. We, we owe that to um, the people of Tasmania. Tasmania needs the majority of club presidents to give the state the thumbs up at a vote in August. And two Tasmanian footy legends have been anointed as greats of the game. Welcomed into Hawthorne's Hall of Fame, Rodney Rocket E joins the club, celebrated for his 41-year playing and coaching career, which included four Hawthorne premierships. Fellow Hawks legend Darren Pritchard has also been inducted for his triple premiership winning career. Meanwhile, a current Tasmanian star has returned to his hometown today. North Melbourne's Aaron Hall shared his knowledge with students from Clarence and Rose Bay High Schools as the two went head-to-head -head this afternoon. The Hobart-born kangaroo says he's keen to see more Tasmanians make it onto the big stage. I'm one of the fortunate ones to, to have had you know, um, a long career in the AFL. And, um, yeah, I've got, I've got a passion for, for the kids down here and the next generation to, to hopefully um, make it to where I've been. Hall will be in action for North Melbourne when it faces Adelaide at Blunston Arena on Sunday. An international import with NBA experience is the final piece to be added to the Jack Jumpers roster. Shooting guard Milton Doyle will head down under in the next NBL season once he finishes in the Turkish Basketball Super League. Doyle played 10 games for the Brooklyn Nets while also spending time in Spain and Italy. I think I bring uh, playmaking ability, uh, being able to get guys involved and create my own shot and uh, play defense to be able to help the team out in a majority of ways. I really believed he was going to stick in the NBA when it's two-way. With the Nets, I followed him very closely at that point and, um, you know, I tracked him the last two or three years and kept his name on our radar. Ex-Jack jumper Josh Adams could be headed for a hill turn, according to the NBL website. Rival clubs are seriously targeting the star guard. 
And with our Commonwealth Games hockey teams announced this week, tonight's Friday flashback is on Tasmania's Warriors on the field. Bianca Langham, Daniel Sproul and Matthew Wells have all medalled at the Commonwealth Games, but like every athlete, their journey started at the grassroots. It's north in the black and white, south in the blue and gold. Back in the days before synthetic turf, hockey needed big swings and was a minefield for teeth. This 1975 clash is the earliest in our records, predating one of the sport's first household names, goalkeeper Marie Fish, who went on to the Olympics. We're getting there nowadays, so hopefully we'll stay on the top in Wim's hockey. While Bianca Langham was part of Australia's gold medal winning Hockey Roos team at the 98 Commonwealth Games, doubling up with a World Cup win against the Netherlands that same year. I had the support of all the teammates around me, so I went in there and just thought I could only do my best, and um, with their support, uh, world champions, we came out. So. In the new millennium, Tassie Zane Wright was called up to the Kookaburra squad. Played three tests against New Zealand, then uh, went to the East Asian Games and had a successful trip over there. But Daniel Sproul was already cemented in the team after being part of the bronze Aussies at Atlanta 96. There it is, the Aussies are bronze medalists. Danny Sproul from a famous footballing family, now living in Tasmania. He'd soon be joined by Matthew Wells, who went on to claim a volume of gold medals, first in Manchester's 2002 Commonwealth Games. Then in one of the all-time great performances, the decider at Athens 2004. And all the way back to Wells. The fullback was part of the famous moment in Australian sporting history, claiming the nation's first and only men's Olympic gold medal in the sport. After downing the defending champion 2-1, thanks to a Jamie Dwyer goal in the eighth minute of extra time. Livermore. Dwyer! It's in! It. Ending nearly half a century without the highest honour of them all. One of the most famous and long-lasting sporting hoodoos in Australian history has finally been laid to rest. Wells finally able to feel that elusive gold around his neck and Greece's olive reef on his head. A crowning glory no Tasmanian hockey player has felt since. Good evening and welcome to Take Your Dog to Work Day. Happy here, Charlie has really enjoyed her first day of work in 13 years. Around the state today, St Helens and Friendly Beach is our high with 15. Hobart, Launceston and Burnie, 14. Devonport, a top of 13 degrees. Temperatures generally... Hold on, just sit there for a sec. Close to average, Smithton and Flinders Island 14 degrees, King Island, Lowhead, Bushy Park and Strawn all 13. Lyawini started the day on 3 degrees and warmed up to be 5. Don't do that, Charlie. Uh, a low level cloud over the uh, west coast today brought a few showers there, just 4 millimetres at Warra, the highest reeling. Uh, reading. A cold front has cloud to our east with another front visible south of the bight. Cold, unstable air extends our way as well. Tomorrow, the weakening front will cross the state with another moving close by day's end. Winds picking up too, northwestly 25 to 35 knots, reaching 40 knots over the west and south in the morning. Swells up to 6 metres. Gale warning that's been issued for waters between South East Cape and the tip of Flinders Island. A strong wind warning for remaining coastal waters along with the South West Lakes. A minor flood warning also for the North Esk River. So for the weekend, here we go. Hobart a shower or two and 14 degrees. Maydean a showery and 10, 12 the top for Oatlands with a late shower moving in. Launceston, showers increasing during the day, 15 the high, 15 also for Devonport. Showers for Liawini, a high of 6 degrees. Burnie tomorrow, top of 13, a windy day with showers. Rain for Strawn, 13 as well and 14, the top for Marrowar. St Helens tomorrow, 15 with a shower or two. Swansea, 15 as well, 15 and partly cloudy for Orford. On Sunday, showery and windy for most. Snow to 600 metres, partly cloudy over the east. Mostly fine on Monday, a shower over the west and far south. Snow to 700 metres. And on Tuesday, showers over the west, far south and north. Partly cloudy in Perth tomorrow, a shower and 16 in Adelaide. Partly cloudy for Melbourne. Sunny and low 20s for both Sydney and Brisbane. Come here, come here. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, sorry, a bit late there. Launceston, uh, clear and 8 degrees. Cloudy in Hobart and 9. And Devonport, partly cloudy at the moment as well. Kim, Charlie's really enjoyed her only day of work in her life. We're off now, but can you pick up that little mess in the corner on your way out? Thanks. <laughs> what is that? Never work with children, pets <laughs> and Murphs.